So every bass fisherman loves topwater frogs. And the ones that hate it, hate it for one reason only, bad hookup ratios. Today I'm going to tell you the number one reason your hookup ratios are not good and how to fix it. And that one reason is going to really surprise you because you've never heard it before. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Craig Daniels. Welcome back to the channel. This is Rocky Top Splash. If you could use more fishing tips on a hollow body frog, click that subscribe button, give this video a big thumbs up. It goes a long way to help this channel out. Go ahead, follow us on Instagram, Rocky Top Splash. Trying to get to a thousand followers. Once we do, we're giving away a brand new Lou's LFS baitcaster. Tag us in all your posts at hashtag Rocky Top Splash. I'd love to repost some of your big fish you've caught from tips that I've given you. So let's go ahead and dig into this video today. Everybody knows a hollow body frog is an absolute killer lure anywhere that you have grass, docks, shallow cover, stumps, logs, really a versatile lure, weedless, just one of my all around go-tos, especially here on Lake Chickamauga. But the number one thing that people hate about these things is the hookup ratio is horrible, or is it? I believe that I know the number one reason as to why your hookup ratios are not very good. So before we dig into that, let's go with some modifications you can make to your frog that actually work, that are proven to work, and will help you. The first thing you're going to do is a brand new frog right out of the pack has very long tails. Those tails are long for a reason. They are made to modify to the length that you want. Two things you can do with those tails. The first thing is you can cut them straight across like I do, about two inches from the body. Uh, what that's going to do is going to give you a more compact uh, lure presentation to the hooks. If you leave those legs long, uh, those bass are going to come up and they're going to hit the, the tips of the tails and they're not going to have a good strike close to these hooks. Once you trim these legs down, it's going to give you a better hookup ratio because you have a better chance of that bass actually hitting your frogs instead of the tip of the legs. So that's the first tip. Two inches from the, from the body of the frog down to the tip of the tail. The second thing you can do, I'm not a big believer in it, but I have seen it done and some people have a lot of success with it. They cut one leg at two inches and one leg a little longer. Uh, just if you want to do an inch and a half or two inches, they cut them at a slant to have that one leg longer than the other one. What, what this is going to do in theory is it's going to offset the weight of this frog and it's going to make it easier for you to walk. If you have a hard time walking a frog, that is one thing that you're going to see universal on a lot of these videos you're watching on, on that's how to do it. The third thing that I like to do is you can remove this weight at the bottom of your frog. Take this weight out. Just pop that weight right out of there. Well, easier said than done. Let's get our pliers here. You're going to pop this weight out. That gives you an open cavity into this frog. What people do is they add rattles. Something that's going to clack together and make noise. You've got three options really. You can go get some glass bead rattles, just small worm rattles, and you can slide those in there. It's just going to make a little ticking sound. You can add a couple. They don't weigh a lot, so you could add two or three of these things. And it's not going to affect the weight of your frog. That's going to give just a little bit of rattle, make a little bit of noise. The second thing you can do is glass bead rattles. They come in different sizes different colors, black, orange, red, really doesn't matter. Also, oh, get out of here now. Also, very light. You can pop in one or two. It's going to make a clanging sound. Give it a little different sound than that glass bead. The third option you have to make noise inside this is you can actually add small uh, bullet weights or those little gremlin weights that you've got pop one of these in here. Now, when you get to these, 
once you start adding eighth ounce or quarter ounce clacks in there, that's going to make your frog heavier. And what that's going to do is two things. First thing it's going to do is make a clacking sound, a noise attractant, and it's also going to make your frog sit lower in the water. When you cast this frog out and your water level's here, if this frog weighs a little more in, in the rear end, it's going to sit down in that water, which is going to set these hooks below that water line and give you an even better chance for a better hookup ratio. Now, once you do that, it's going to tip the, the nose of your frog up and it's not going to be very good for walking. So if you're looking to add weight inside this frog, you're not going to want to walk the frog at all. And that leads me to another thing you need to do. If you are trying to fish a hollow body frog with anything less than a heavy action rod and 65 pound braid, it's just a matter of time before you get your heart broke. You need a heavier rod Whatever size you want, from seven foot to seven foot six, the longer rod's gonna give you more leverage, but you're gonna need a seven foot to a seven foot six heavy action rod and a 65 pound braid. I'm gonna link you guys all the things that I use in the description, so go ahead and check that out. And uh, I really like the Suffix 832 Advanced Superline braid. I've used a lot of different braid, but that's my number one go-to is the Suffix 832 Superline. 65 pounds the only thing when you're fishing around the kind of grass that's in Chickamauga You cannot have anything less Than that setup It's not going to hurt you to go with a heavy action rod and 65 pound braid That also allows you enough backbone to really drive those hooks home and get a really good hook set But here we go This is my number one tip as to why you are not catching fish on a hollow body frog. The exact thing that I just said. What is the number one thing that every single bass fisherman is doing to these topwater frogs? They cast them out there and they're worried about walking this frog, making sure they get the right cadence, working that frog the perfect way, making sure it's walking. And what happens is when you do that, your mind's thinking about walking that frog in the presentation. What I like to do is cast this frog out and let it sit. That's it guys, let it sit there. I cast it out, wait till those water ripples disperse off that frog, and then I give, here's my cadence, twitch, twitch. I make this frog just do two little hops, two frontward movements, and makes this water spit. Here's why this works. A bass has that lateral line that I'm sure you guys have heard about, it lets them detect prey in the water. When a, when a bass is sitting there, they know as soon as something comes into that water, if they can detect a small little two inch shad, well then they can detect a half ounce frog sitting on top of the water. So what I like to do is cast this frog out there. When it's calm, you're making a just a commotion in the water, the slightest commotion. I just make a little pop pop, get that water to ripple, and then I pause. Here's why I pause up to, up to four or five, maybe 10 seconds between the twitch twitch, okay? When this lure is sitting there, this is when those bass can just come up and kill this thing. It's very hard for these bass to hit a moving target. So if you're sitting here and you're trying to work, walk that frog a perfect motion, the first thing you're gonna do is not pay attention to your frog. Let that frog sit there pop it two times, leave it alone. Keep your eye on that frog. Once that thing comes up and annihilates it, then you set your hook. I don't sit there and go through this, count to three or turn around and, and call your mom and see how everything's going. When that frog, when you can't see that frog, set the hook. That's what you gotta do, is try to rip that bass's face off with this frog. Once you plow those fish in the face, that's the secret. Get a good hook set and just reel those puppies in because frog fishing is not that hard. You gotta make that frog very susceptible, make it an easy meal. Don't make that thing sit here and, and walk a hundred times to the back of the boat. Throw it out there, leave it setting, make it look like an easy meal. I'm telling you guys, that is the number one tip. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, 
click that subscribe button give the video a big thumbs up share it around with your friends get out there on the water guys when you get out there fish simple and simply catch fish see you on the next one